Let's take a look at Windows Update for Business. So within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, we can go into Devices, and within here we have the Windows 10 Update Rings. This is where Microsoft is moving their Windows updates. So within Intune, we can control systems that are using the company portal, systems that are under the control of Configuration Manager, or we can just have systems that have group policies applied to them, telling them how to get their updates. So the update rings themselves, we can set these up so that we have different update parameters for different groups within the organization. Currently, we have a test, a pilot grouping here for test machines. We have the Windows Update All Pilot um, update ring that we've set up, and we're going to create one more profile, and this one is going to be for production. So we're going to call this one Windows Updates All Prod. Within the settings, we can go through and configure how we're going to roll out the updates to the users within this uh, profile. So all of the groups that we apply this against will take on these settings. Currently, we're in the semi-annual channel. This is the channel that Microsoft has set up for all Windows 10 systems at this point. The prior version, the semi-annual channel targeted for 1809 and below is being deprecated. And as those systems go away and everybody has Windows 1903 or later, we'll be able to make sure that everything is running through the semi-annual channel. We also have the insider version. So if you want to test pre-production versions, pre-release versions of these updates, you can go ahead and choose one of these rings and test those updates prior to them becoming available for the masses. So once we've set up our channel, we can go in and specify whether we want to get updates for other Microsoft products such as Office, Edge, those. We have Windows drivers, so drivers for hardware that Microsoft is distributing. If you don't want those, of course, you can block them. And then we can set up how many days we're going to wait for quality and feature updates to be ready for these devices. So the date that we put in here is the number of days after Microsoft releases these updates. So our quality updates, which we typically think of as our software updates, critical updates, security updates, Windows drivers. How many days do we want to wait past the point that Microsoft releases those, which is typically once a month. So we will go ahead and set this up for our production users to be 30 days after the release of the Microsoft updates. The feature updates are updates to the operating system, new features, upgraded operating systems. So we're going to give this one 45 days for our production users. This gives us a chance to test in our test groups, our pre-pilot, our pilot groups, all the way through. And then our feature update uninstall period, I'm going to leave that one at 10, giving us 10 days to be able to uninstall the feature updates if they're not working or causing issues. Under user experience, we're going to set up the automatic update behavior. I can specify to notify when downloads are available. Auto install at maintenance time, which gives us this time frame here for when my users are typically working. So I want to install outside of that time frame. Install and restart at maintenance time. Install and restart at a scheduled time. So if I want to make sure that they're restarted, the install occurs and then they're restarted at a specific time, 3 a.m. on Saturday, I can set that up. Auto install and reboot without end user control for those machines like our kiosk machines, systems that are running uh, other hardware. So we can go ahead and make sure that we 
get those rebooted since no users are typically on them. Or I can just reset to the default operating system parameters. I'm going to set this one up to be install at maintenance time. The restart checks allow Windows update to check to make sure that the system has enough battery power if it's a laptop to do the updates. Check to make sure that a user is not within a video call or working on the system. So it makes sure that the restart can occur without causing problems with any of the users. The option to pause Windows updates. Do I want to give that option to my users? If so, they can pause it for the time frame that we'll set here in a moment. I'm going to disable the ability. Actually, I'm going to leave that one set to enable. The next one, though, I'm going to turn off the ability for somebody to check for Windows updates. I don't want them clicking the button within the control panel to make the updates appear and do the install. When we get notifications, a little pop-up usually occurs and tells the user what's going on. For updates, I want to make sure that when the restart pop-up appears, the user acknowledges it so that they have to click it so that they know a restart is imminent. Then I'm going to remind the users within a certain period of time that the restart is going to occur and then they can dismiss this one. So I'm going to give them four hours so that they have plenty of time to finish out any work that they're doing, make sure it's saved. And then 15 minutes prior to the restart, they're going to get a permanent reminder, so they cannot dismiss this one. It's going to pop up and let them know restart is going to occur. And then how do I want those notifications to appear? Use the default Windows Update notifications. Going to pop up with a nice little toast pop up over here on the lower right hand side. Or I can set it up to turn off all of them except for the restart warnings. I can turn off all notifications, including reset warnings, to which at that point these settings are moot. This one I'm going to set up to use the defaults. And then at the deadline, so I'm going to allow things to happen. So deadline for feature updates, I'm going to give somebody the ability to defer this for up to seven days. Same way with my quality updates. And then how long before an actual reboot is forced upon the user? So I'm going to set that one to five days. And then do I want the system to reboot prior to the installation of the updates? Some companies prefer this. It cleans up the machine, make sure everything is closed out. So especially if you have systems that are running other machinery, uh, kiosk systems, you might want to reboot those prior to doing the installation. So I'm going to do the auto reboot on that one. And then on the next page, we have our assignments. These are the groups that groups or users that we're going to assign the updates to. So we have the option to do selected groups, and then we can include and exclude groups. We have the all users or all devices or all devices and all de all users. So if I choose that option, everyone's going to get it and then I can select groups to exclude and at that point I can exclude groups that don't need the updates. They've already received the updates. So let's do the Windows update fast and the Windows update pilot groups and we're going to exclude those. We can also set it up for selected groups and then I can specify groups that will receive these and we're going to choose the production group and if I wanted to, I could still 
choose selected groups to exclude. So if I have a subset of users that are within this production group that I do not want to have the updates hitting them, I can specify those or even devices. And then I have a rundown of everything that I set and I create that and we're ready to roll. So now any device that is within that Intune Windows Updates All production group will get this profile and start running with those settings. Taking a look at a virtual machine that I have set up in the pilot group, you can then see how things appear within Windows Update and Security. Notice updates are paused. You can not choose the check for updates option. The active hours are set. This one allows me to adjust based on activity, but I do not have the ability to set the hours myself. I can view the update history. I have a driver update that was installed. And under advanced options, we can set whether allow over metered connections or not. Restart is turned off. Update notifications, I can turn those on or off. But then the other options are grayed out due to the profile. If you want to see what is being controlled, you can run through this list and take a look at everything that's being controlled by our profile. Now, if you want to make changes or uh, control how the updates are being managed, we can go in and we have some options. Of course, delete will get rid of the profile. Pause pauses the profile so that the updates will not go out. So let's say during the pilot phase, we determine that we do have issues with the updates. So we can go ahead and pause feature updates or quality updates. And it will go ahead and pause those until we resume those or 35 days. And I can come in and resume the quality updates. While it's paused, I have the option to extend the quality updates so I can extend them up to another 35 days. And if I'm having a lot of problems with the updates, I also have the ability to uninstall the updates. So it'll pull those out of the systems where it's been installed and you notice it automatically paused the updates. So once Microsoft has fixed the issue with it, we can then go back in and resume and get these updates pushed back out. And then further down within here, we have our monitoring options. So we can check on device status, user status, and end user update status. Let's go over to our all pilot group. We have one device in here. It's pending install. You saw that one before it had been paused. No users in here and no end user status. If we go back to the last one, the fast ring, we do have one that's been installed. So we have a system out here. Deployment has succeeded. The user status has succeeded. No end user update status. So that's an overview of Windows Update for Business. Thank you very much.